I thank you for coming. My name is David Van Covering. My wife Becky is with me today, and we are from Cleveland, Tennessee. I've known Ray Hughes most of his ministry. We have been forever brothers and forever <laughs> servants of the Lord together. And by the looks of the attendance in this room, which is nearly filled, I am a musicologist. That means I have studied the development of musical sound and its development and evolution. I have a huge musical instrument collection. I have over 200 musical instruments. Uh, the convergence of what's happening in technology, the Lord showed me. I am a visionary. I believe in visions. I believe sound is a frequency set. Sounds and frequency are the same. But matter and frequency are equally connected. Change the frequency of the iron and the steel in that chair, and it'll become a liquid. Take it back to its origin, and it was a solid of a rock form. All they did was change its frequency, and it went from rock to steel. Or it'll go from steel to liquid. Frequency. Glass was sand. They changed its frequency, and it became glass. God understands all the frequencies. That's what this is about today. God's science of sound, science of frequency. Knowing God is a frequency set, not unlike the scales on a keyboard or a guitar or a trumpet or the human voice, frequencies. God's sound is his manifestation. He said, let there be, and universes became from his sound. So all that is is sound. All that is is sound. You have a tumor growing in your eyeball, and it's a frequency that changed the molecular structure of your tissue, and that was a frequency. And frequencies go beyond the frequencies of hearing, 20 to 20,000. What about the frequencies of the eye, 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers at 700 octaves above? What you see excites 700 times more of your brain than what you hear. Did you get that? What you take in, Jesus said, be careful how you look at the woman because your destiny is dependent upon your observation. So sin is a frequency set. Lust is a frequency. <laughs> Pornography, internet, which is a sound set frequency manifesting as light. Sound's a big subject. It goes all the way from the glory of God, which is his frequencies, to the manifestation of everything in the cosmos, which are our frequencies, separated by the fall of man, Lucifer first, then the fall of man, when the speed of light slowed down, and this cosmos became the fallen cosmos. And God's frequencies are still the original frequencies. But its upper bandwidth... And after I pray, we'll start there. Now, I'm going to pray that something happened to you today. I want you to be altered. I want you to hear what you couldn't hear in the natural. I want you to hear in the supernatural, above the speed of light, into God's realm, which is not out there, it's not out where, it's else when, not else where. Else when, when, time. Pick up the speed of light. Pick up the, above the speed of light. Pick up the speed of the spirit. Pick up the speed of the anointing. Pick up the speed of God consciousness, which is a frequency set. And I'm going to pray for that. And I'm going to pray for every one of you that God would do serious damage to what you think you know. Wow. So that you can leave here with more bandwidth, more knowledge, more understanding, clearer pictures visually. That you will understand sound in a whole new way. You're going to leave here with a new authority over the sound you make in the form of words. You create your destiny with your words. You call forth your curses with your words or you call forth his manifestation by what you see and what you say. And they're only separated by 700 octaves. It's all sound. God's sound. Father, we welcome you. We sense your presence, Lord. You're not only the frequency that hold the matter and the walls together 
and the frequency in which we live, move, and have our being that causes our bodies to be, and you spoke the frequencies that our spirits are, and you abide in those frequency sets as resonant harmonics, but Father, you're going to teach us about sound from your perspective today. May we leave changed spiritually. Show us how, Father, to hear your voice and see your images as visions and as destinies and as plans and as assignments. Show them to us today. May we so worship you that the physics of worship and the science of sound become our existence and we're aware that you are around us and in us and through us. And we are to resonate to your sounds in Jesus' name. Now reveal this. Take away our ignorance. Take away our stubbornness. Take away our lack of interest and birth in us a desire to know your frequencies and your sounds in Jesus' name. And the people said, Amen. I'm a scientist. I'm an inventor. I'm a musician, musicologist. When I was 12, I could play 27 instruments. My dad was a master musician. Music is a natural thing for a child. All children. Every kind. Every kid. There's a lot of myths. You can be tone deaf. That's a myth. You can't be tone deaf. Now, some people don't carry a tune very good. There's something wrong with their hearing and their listening. But it's their hearing and listening that causes that. Some people have rhythm. Some people have more rhythm. Some have been accused of having more rhythm. I think that's a myth. I mean, I got some dear friends that because they're black, they're great musicians, and because they're black, they're great percussionists. But I got other guys that are very white, and, yeah. and, and you'd think they're black. <laughs> <laughs> but there are myths. There are myths. We think that sound is that which we hear with the ear. 20 to 20,000 cycles. Some of us that have been around sound a little bit too long, a little bit too loud. We may have some calluses on some bones and some tissue, and or we've just turned it off. We don't like to hear how loud sounds or high sounds anymore. I mean, there's a psychological problem involved. But 20 to 20,000 is basically the frequency, something moving. If I could wrap this board 440 times a second, it would sound the tone A, 440 cycles a second, A, 440. But if I could get it to frequency higher, the pitch goes up. Frequency lower, the pitch goes down. And we think sound is that which what we hear until we learn about God making plasmas. Crickets don't have loudspeakers. Crickets don't have sound systems. They can rub parts of themselves together and make these chirping sounds, not with vocal cords, but with friction. More like a violin, more like taking rosin on a glove and rubbing it down a pipe, and it would sing. But we think that the frequency set is that which we've learned from the telephone. Back in the 1800s, Graham Bell found that he could take a little piece of thin mica, stone, and if he talked against it, it would move on the other side. And if he hooked it up to a little coil and put an electric charge across the coil, the signal coming off that electrical charge could go down a wire and put another one of these at the other end, and this sound, interpreted into a signal, an impulse, through the wire, made that one move like this one, and the microphone and the speaker were the same. That's all we got today. We got different sized microphones that all work like different sized speakers, and that's it. That's all we got. But we know how to make the signal bigger. We call that amplifiers. And we know how to mix it and filter out the highs and boost the bass. But it's real simple stuff. God didn't make sound systems like telephones. He didn't make your body to respond to the 20 to 20,000 cycles that we say our ears can hear. What about the tear ducts in your eyes that hear? The hair follicles on your head that hear? And a plasma that could be generated into this room that you could feel. And it can go way beyond the 20 to 20,000 that we've limited to our primitive microphones and our primitive speakers. The human anatomy can hear much more. 
we feel it with our body. A plasma coming through the atmosphere from nature, from the wind, from the fire, the frequency of a flame. Years ago, I was teaching the science of sound in hundreds and hundreds of schools all across America. I do three shows a day, and I'd set up a whole musical array of apparatus and instruments. It was a funny show, it was a humorous show, but it was science. We were teaching them the science of sound. And I'd build a device that was a propane tank with a flame, two pieces of metal, a wick of asbestos coming from a bottle full of table salt and water, and I put a signal into the electrodes in the flame, and the flame became the speaker. Now, that didn't have anything to do with that old telephone system. But it was frequencies that was omnidirectional, 360 degrees, from zero signal, not 20, from zero and sub-audio, below the sound of the ear, human ear, to as high as we could give it a signal that could radiate. A flame was a better speaker than a speaker. I told my friends in rock and roll in those days, I was building mini Moogs and synthesizers for the rock industry, and Keith Emerson was a great mini Moog player. Some of you remember, they got to be older to remember that guy, but Keith said, boy, I know a guy out in Texas got a couple of oil wells. He said, they're 60 feet tall. He said, could you put the back of this thing on a truck and back two electrodes into that oil well and two into that oil well, and we'll get a couple of bulldozers out there and we'll make an amphitheater and we'll have 60 foot high plasma projectors and we'll play brain salad surgery and woof Texas into Bolivian. <laughs> and Bob Moog stopped us. <laughs> he said the mini Moog, which is laying up on a platform, has got a third oscillator that can go sub audio. And if you let a mini Moog put a sub audio signal down that oil pipe, with about 100,000 watts was what we were going to light these flames up with. <laughs> he said, if there's a crack in that pipe and that sub-audio signal from that mini mode goes down that pipe, and it will, and modulates that pipe, you're going to blow that whole gas well. You blow half the county away. <laughs> so this wild man in those years did not use plasma projectors and an oil well. But that's how God talked through the bush. Oh, that's exactly how God talked to the burning bush. It was a plasma projector. The bush wasn't even consumed. God was burning the flame at a frequency not common to the carbon that was in the plant. It was above the frequency of the plant. And the flame became the modulation source and Moses got God's message. So God could communicate across a broad spectrum of frequency. But let me try to come back to my notes and try to come back to my <laughs> I told you, I was going to tell you that this records sound. But I've already said that sound is the frequency of the human anatomy, 20 to 20,000, that's the category of physics we say is a sound. The sight is 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers, 700 octaves above. And when you see something, your eye responds, or your brain responds, with 700 times the neuron firing than when you heard a sound, which means that the eye gate is 700 times more powerful than the ear gate. You will remember 700 times that which you see with perception of sight than that which you hear with the perception of sound. Now, that does not mean that God can't use sound to talk to you, because he does, obviously. But if you only hear God through sound as 20 to 20,000, you're not hearing very much from God. And if the only thing you hear from God comes through the musical instruments and the communication of the artist from 20 to 20,000 cycles, you're missing the main event. Because the main event is you being in tune to the spirit of that musician, which is above the bandwidth of light, and he's communicating to you a broader frequency range of his spirit that's reflecting God into him, and you only hearing his bass guitar, you got a problem. Mm -hmm. And he's got a problem if he's not anointed enough to reflect God's full bandwidth. So bass guitars and other instrumentalists, get your act together. <laughs>
Why do you want to use such a narrow part of the bandwidth of God's glory? First of all, it's an evil. Because you are to be the full transmitter of the glory of God through worship. And if you're not prepared to worship and know His presence with all your skills and all your tricks and all your licks and all your technology, be at excellence. We heard Ray talking about that this morning in this room. How many years did they have to study before they could teach? How many years did they have to study before they could perform? But the point is the full bandwidth of God. I told you that this records. It does. It is recording. If you have a ring, I'd like you to touch it. If you have a diamond ring, I'd like you to touch the diamond. If you don't have a ring, touch your watch. If you don't have a watch, touch your belt buckle. Touch your glasses. Touch something of metal right now. That metal is recording everything that's going on in this room. Not only the sound is going in, it's modulating the light, and the light, like that machine, is modulating my voice, is modulating a beam of a laser, and is drawing pits on a disc. Joshua said, these stones have heard. Jesus said, these stones will play back. They're going to cry out. I'm telling you, this as a scientist, this piece of metal is recording. Not only the sound, but it's got enough bandwidth to get up to 400 to 700 nanometers of my eye, 700 octaves higher, and it's getting the images. And it's going up well past the speed of light to my spirit. And as the Holy Ghost speaks into my spirit, my spirit is here above the speed of light. Let me explain that. God decided he was going to build a cosmos one day. And he called forth and he said, let there be. And he had the authority to pop the quiff and the quantum wave collapse would happen in the universe. And he called forth light. And the frequency of light was the voice frequency that he spoke. And it began to resonate and it became light. Light and energy and energy and matter and matter in the cosmos. And here we are. All from the voice of God. All from the frequencies of God. There's 102 elements that have an atomic frequency, which is the frequency of the voice of God. Speaking and causing it to become and sustaining this cosmos. If God stopped thinking the thought of the voice, we would stop being. The planets are because God is sustaining them. In Him we live, move, and have our being. In Him all things are and all things are sustained. We are in the voice of God, in the mind of God. Now, it's not elsewhere. God's not way off someplace, living in a black hole on the other side of that blank spot in the north. <laughs> you want to wonder what you're going to do forever? You're going to help develop eons and eons. Because there will never be a time you will not be. Oh, i got to say that again. <laughs> you are an eternal being. There was never a time that you were not in the mind of God. From beginnings, before your birth, he knew you. So before you had this chemical pile of clay, constants of your atomic structure, and the lattice that forms your shape, God knew you. Before your mother's womb, he knew you. But you see, we got a problem in concept of God. He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning. We freeze up right there. <laughs> I had a birth, 1940. My heart started shutting off a few years ago, and I thought it was all over. My heart would shut off. My blood pressure would stop. And I'd collapse. And everybody thought I'd die. And two days or three days later, I'd do it again. Now it's getting serious. You wake up and somebody's giving you an injection into the heart or into the arm. You wake up, somebody's breathing into you. Wake up in an ambulance. Wake up on a hospital bed. And you died. Only I began to recognize that my frequencies were eternal and I didn't die. We are eternal. Our frequency is eternal. We're birthed by God, eternal God. There was never a time he was not. There was never a time we were not in his mind. There will never be a time we are not. We are valuable to God. We are not some invaluable thing that we can snuff the frequency of life out of that unborn baby. God knew that baby before the mother's womb. 
He has a destiny, a purpose, and a plan for that child. And many miss it. We don't hear the frequencies of God. This is not a perfect receptor. I am not as perfect as I was, or as I was before God put me here. But I'm here now. Lucifer fell, bearer of light, the one that was the honorable bearer of light and the glory and the sustainer of light, and he fell, and the frequency of light shifted downward, and he was cut off from God because he lost his bandwidth. He lost his upper consciousness. And the fall and the separation from God is a loss of consciousness. An understanding of God is a result of consciousness. God consciousness. Do you have a God consciousness? Do you have the frequencies that God speaks through his science of sound regenerating your purpose every hour? Is every conversation pure? I must confess, there are times in my daily walk that I am closer to God consciousness and further from God consciousness. And God, forgive me. Lord God, help me to stay on the frequency, to stay tuned in. Turn the sidebands of noise off in my life. We talked about sidebands of noise that interfere with God's signal as in worship a little while ago, the physics of worship. If worship is the full bandwidth of God speaking into your life as you speak into Him totally through consecration and the giving of your gift and the preparing of your your voice and of your expression and you worship Him and He worships into you through glory, through wisdom, through knowledge, through upper bandwidth communication where you know your destiny, you know your purpose, you know your assignment. When my heart shut off around the plane, when my heart quit, did I scare you? Becky said, no, you didn't scare me. You're not going anywhere. And I just died. I woke up and I'd had a stroke. I don't look like that, do I? When God heals you, he heals you. <laughs> and she said to me, you're not going anywhere. Your assignment isn't done. And yours isn't either. Yours isn't either. Can we write our assignment? Do we know the frequencies that God has spoken to me that let me know my assignment? Have I heard that frequency set of my destiny and my purpose so clear that I can turn to the Word of God and confirm it in in words? And so clear that I can precisely write it on the back of a business card. And if you can't write on this little business card, If you can't write what your destiny is, if you can't write what your purpose is, if it takes more words than you can write on the back of a business card, you might not have heard what God's really saying to you. Because what he speaks, he is simple. He's got a destiny for you that is so broad and so simple that you can't miss it. And the only reason we do is because we've got a circuit that's full of noise. You're a noisy generation. Our minds are so filled with bandwidth of clutter. You could hum right now 30 commercials. Maybe more. A kid comes so good that he develops brand new human skills. We've never given a child video so fast, 30 plus frames per second, two-way, interacting with a game. Children today have developed reflexes that are beyond anything that our generation can do. We can't do it. We don't have the reflexes for it. And they don't have it if they don't develop it. But they're developing it. Noise on the circuit. Now, when I was a kid, my dad gave me a lot of noise of 27 musical instruments. And I had to play. I didn't have a choice. But I loved to play because he made it fun for me to play. And I loved to perform. Could you imagine me liking to perform? (laughs) But I could play instruments, stringed instruments, and percussion instruments, and horns. and I learned the basic systems. And God wants to speak into you as specific as we've developed our other skill sets. 
Some can type. Some can type so fast. And I can type so fast and make so many mistakes <laughs> that I've almost stopped typing. But the point is, is that our technologies and our culture has developed this input to ourselves. And we've responded to it so fully and so totally that our life is full of stuff. You don't have any time left over. How many free hours have you got to spend new time in the Word of God? Or if I gave you a book that I'm working on and just gave it to you elsewhere, and it talks about the theory of where yesterday went, it's all recorded, and where tomorrow comes from. The Holy Ghost speaks to us from our tomorrow. God is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. He's got a purpose for my life. And I can miss my purpose. Don't you think you can? Some of us have missed it, and we know the darkness. We know the pain. We know the agony. Some hear broken marriages, broken relationship, failed business opportunities, broken promises, missing God. You don't think Satan is real? And he's not off in hell someplace. He's running around right here with his demons to capture your intent and in your heart in your destiny, in your purpose, in your gifts. And he's here to kill, block, steal, and destroy. And if you don't think he's active, you don't know. I feel sorry for the one that doubts if Satan is real. He's out to kill, steal, and destroy. He was shutting me off. And it was faith keeping me alive. And only faith. What is faith? She knew what God knew. Amen. That's what faith is. Faith is seeing what God sees. That's right. That's right. And if you think faith is a capacitor, that you do your reading of the word, and you do your good works, and you charge your capacitor up, and you get enough voltage yeah. that you can release for your miracle, you're wrong. That's not what faith is. Faith is seeing, observing, using the full bandwidth to know what God knows. Amen. And when you know what God knows, you can't see you or your loved ones with a tumor because God can't see them with a tumor. And you will lay hands on that tumor and you will curse that tumor and you will attack it because you have the faith which is the vision of God alive in you. You've observed what God observed. You've seen what God's... It's only frequency. Frequency, full range frequency. How full are we? Do we have enough bandwidth to see our future? Now, oh, David, you're getting a little bit mystical here now. Where's this new age stuff's coming in here? No, it's not new age. It's very old age. <laughs> it's ancient old age. It's when God said, Lucifer, you've sinned and you lose your bandwidth and the speed of light slowed down. And man in the garden, seeking wisdom and knowledge and noise, took of the fruit, but he failed in knowing and doing what God said to do, and he lost some more bandwidth. And the fall is only the speed of light slowing down. When the speed of light slowed down, all the chemical actions in the plants failed. Man lost his upper bandwidth to know his destiny. Now, you got a memory. You can remember yesterday. But I can't remember tomorrow. <laughs> but if I am in the else when mode, else when, not elsewhere, else when, and I know what God knows, and he's speaking into my life, and he's speaking into my being, and I'm on his frequency set, Jesus said when the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach you all things. You will know all truth. He'll only speak the things he's heard from the Father, and he will show you things to come. You're to be a prophet. You're to be a prophet. We're all to be prophets. We're supposed to know. Yeah, that's right. Not as in a soothsayer. Not as in a fortune teller. Please don't come to me and ask me to tell you what's going to happen in your life. That is wrong. But for you to know the bandwidth of God. Jesus said you will know things to come. And you will see what God sees. And you'll know your destiny. You will know your purpose. You will have a vision because this 400 to 700 nanometers lights up. God speaks into that visionary capacity you are. 
You are a visionary. You are capable of seeing your Thursday. You should know what your destiny is. Don't dare be an adult without knowing the destiny of your child. You must know. You can know. The Word of God will be... How do you think we got the Word of God? Two-thirds of it was prophecy. Two-thirds of it was revelation. We're to be a people with upper bandwidth, above the speed of light. So now we got this cosmos cursed to the barrier of the speed of light. And our physics world tells us that's all it is. There's no more. Can't spin anything faster than the speed of light. They've tried. They put these big magnetic rings in the ground, two, three, four miles around. They were going to build one, what was it, 50 miles, 50 miles around out in Texas. It ran out of money. The government said, we can't spend $70 billion to do this. Got them over in, in, in Switzerland. They built these big accelerometers, atom smashers, big magnetic fields. They put a particle in it. They charge it, and they throw magnetism ahead of it, and they suck it. And it spins, and it spins, and it spins, and it spins, and it spins. And by the time it gets up to close to the speed of light, the lights start going dim in the cities around there. It takes all the energy there is, and they can't break the speed of light. God put a barrier on man's dimension. So that's it, guys. Physically, that's all you know. That's right. Can't get faster than that. We will never throw anything away from this planet that can go faster than the speed of light because there's a barrier at the speed of light. But God is above the speed of light. And the fallen cosmos is below the speed of light. And I'm telling you, the else when, not elsewhere, else when cosmos, the spiritual world, is here. It's as close as this recording. Television, pictures, thought, sound, that wall is doing the same thing. Only this wall isn't dense enough to kick off enough electrons because enough photons or reflect off the wall, they can't be absorbed because it's too soft. I've got some pieces of stone from Israel that came from the place where Joshua said, this stone has heard. Now, he knew what he was talking about. He knew the frequencies of God's upper bandwidth. He knew that if matter has photons go in and they're modulated by light the same way the photons get modulated before they hit your digital camera, they get modulated by reflected light, your image, carries that modulation, that reflected image into the camera, and it hits silicone. The photon goes into the silicone, germanium arsenide, man-made crystal, and an electron stream flows out. The reason they use germanium arsenide, it's got a lot of free electrons. The problem with the wall, it doesn't have a lot of free electrons. So it's not dense enough. Joshua said, this stone is dense enough. He held that stone. It came from the same place in Israel. It came from Shechem. We had them cut. I believe this. The point is that matter is recording and the physical world is this dimension. And God's bandwidth of light above this from which we fell is the spiritual realm that is available. Now demons have fallen. We give demons way too much credit. They can not blow your tires. Come on. <laughs> they can keep you from buying new ones. Let you run a car that's unsafe and you know the wheels are shimmying. And in that sense, you could have a terrible accident because you didn't use your judgment and it clouded your judgment and lied to you. But he hasn't got enough bandwidth to change matter. We give him way too much credit. He doesn't know your future. If you don't tell him, he won't know what God's birthed in you. What do you think this whole language of the Spirit is about? What do you think this bandwidth of knowing God's language is? I don't know if they're getting it. Some are. You understand? You getting it? The lights coming on? God's lights coming on? That cosmos is here. It's around us. Now, in the hospital, my heart shut off, and I never lost my consciousness. I didn't remember it after I woke up, and a lady that worked in the hospital, a warm, it was a real cold room that I'd shut off, and I literally died. My heart had stopped, my blood pressure had gone off. Code blue. The last thing I remember is hearing the horns honk. And the doctors came out of the other operating suites and came to work on me. Three and a half, four minutes go by. And that's about all you got. 
And when I came to, I had been falling into light, moving through light, accelerating, picking up speed, picking up bandwidth, flowing of particles of color moving past me and heard sounds coming from a destination. And I'm racing into that destination of sound. Only the chords I heard, I'd never heard from synthesis. I'd never heard them from electronic music. And I shared a little while ago, I have a huge collection of electronic music records. I have over a thousand LPs that were done with purely electronic music, synthesizers and electronic stuff that I helped invent some of it. And I know what those sounds are, and I know what those other alternative scales and tunings and equally tempered and unequally tempered and all the early scales of man's musicology. But these sounds I heard was something else, and I'm hearing other sounds. Roy Wooten, a friend of mine, had asked me to help him build an instrument that has a keyboard that instead of having a white key and a black key and a white key like our keyboards, it has seven half steps on the keyboard and there's touch sensors on the seven steps and each of the sensors is another one of the frequencies of the table of elements of the constants of the cosmos. Table of elements is the stuff that the universe is made out of. We found 102 of them. And we know something about those. And they all have an atomic number. We took those atomic numbers, translated them into the hearing range, 20 to 20,000 cycles, and he plays the table of elements. It's a little keyboard, seven steps for it. It's real wonderful because you hit a pattern here, and as you move across the keyboard, you hear chords you've never heard. Your spirit resonates to a frequency you've never imagined. And I'm falling into hearing sounds. When I wake up in the hospital, the guy's got the little stainless steel skill saw running, and the surgeon is holding the saw, and my cardiologist is holding his wrist, and they're shouting at each other. And my cardiologist is shouting at the other guy, saying, give him a second, give him a second, give him a second, give him a second. And he's shouting, and this guy says, he's gone, he's gone. They want to get my heart open and they were going to work on me. And I wake up in a dogfight. <laughs> Six doctors screaming. The room is icy cold. And I'm laying uncovered on a gurney in an operating room. Cold, freezing. But I had been some when. Some when. Not somewhere. Some when. I had gone beyond the speed of light. My consciousness had been fixed and changed and altered. Now, am I telling you you should shut off to have that? No, that's not what I said. <laughs> I, I have a pacemaker. They put some stints in me. They did work on me. I highly recommend that to all my young friends, by the way. Go get a pacemaker. You'll feel better. <laughs> I highly recommend it. It's good for you. Good for your circulation. You don't run out of energy. Okay, Watch me. The point is God, upper frequency of the spiritual realm is here. We're not tuned to it because this physical stuff, the frequencies of this physical stuff is in the mind of God. It's in the creation of God. It's not outside of his control. There is nothing outside of God's control. I don't care how dark it is. I don't care how bleak your life has been. I don't care how bad you've messed up. You're in God's domain. And he loves you. He cares for you. He wants to speak your purpose into you. And he will if we'll just turn the noise off. Wow. Make a list of them. Starts with ambition. Oh, there's a whole bunch of emotions. The emotion I want, the emotions I will, the emotions of I won't. <laughs> Boy, doesn't that generate frequencies inside of me? I won't do that. I don't want to do that. That's an emotion. I don't want that. And want is the other side of that same emotion. It's just a different frequency set. But when I get in harmony to the nodal points of God's purposes, and he says, I want you to go to Somerset, I can't do anything but be in Somerset. 
And I told Becky, if there's one or two or three or four, and the room's full, all the chairs are almost full. I had to be here today. I was supposed to be here today. This was my assignment today. I feel good about that. I'm where I'm supposed, and you're where, and you, and we're all where we're supposed to be today. You're exactly where God wanted you to be. So he could speak, not me. He might use me. He might challenge you with something I'm saying. But his bandwidth, causing a sensation of information inside of you, an explosion inside of you, you should leave this room altered. You should leave this room changed. You should leave this room knowing that there is a knowledge level, a stream that you want to swim in, a knowledge source at a frequency like going out on the internet. I got to get to that website. You need that frequency set. It will be your destiny. It will be what you're designed. You've tried things and have been miserable about it. You've tried things that didn't work. Of course, I've never tried a business idea that failed. Not me. <laughs> I've had multi-million dollar failures. And it wasn't the gas well thing that we didn't build. <laughs> I don't know that we'd have blown that gas well up. I think we should have done that. <laughs> God wired you to do certain things. You got things that just turn you on. You just love to do it. It's where you're natural. It's where you're gifted. It's where you're comfortable. It's where you feel good. Nothing wrong with feeling good about serving God. You're looking at a team of people here around Ray Hughes. This is a happy crowd, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> and, and it's full of originality and full of God's glory and full of his bandwidth and his knowledge, his wisdom and his purpose, his destiny. I'm repeating those words. That's the science of God's sound. He wants you to speak those words. He wants you to be so illuminated that everybody you touch... You do what you're supposed to do in their presence. And if you're working in a situation that's miserable and morbid, get back on your knees. You turn the noise off. I'll tell you that's not where God wants you to be, but I'm not going to tell you to go where God wants you to go. I want God to tell you to go where God wants you to go. You don't need me to be your priest. And you don't need that person sitting next to you or around you or that friend or that relative to speak only into your life. Get it. And let God speak his voice, his science, his frequencies, his sound. And you will blossom. You will be complete. He made you a certain way. Find that frequency set. Resonate there. And it might only be some simple job. Part of the challenge with me has been, if I have a choice to do two things, which one will I choose, Rebecca? Very, very, very hard. And I can't deny that. <laughs> I'm wired that way. <laughs> or is it weird that way? I'm not sure how to spell that word. <laughs> I want to multiply times the complex. I want to multiply times the best. And the challenge in that is, is if you're a child of God, you want to do like Daddy does. I did as a child. I wanted to play like Daddy did. If he could do a riff on a guitar or a marimba or a Hammond organ, Daddy, show me that. I want to do what Daddy does. I got a new Daddy. I got the God of creation. He knows me. He knew my ending before my beginning. Why would I not want him as my counselor? And why don't you want him to totally counsel, rebuild you, remold you? I don't care how old you are. It has nothing to do with age. Oh, it has a lot to do with noise. The older you get, the noisier your circuit is. Because you got all this stuff that's been remembered. Your body's listening too. Not only your neurons and your memory... Oh, I tried that and it won't work. Somebody told me I can't do that. Memory. Memory and matter. Sometimes it's good to get a fresh house. Come on. Or better yet, go home and anoint the one you got and get rid of all that stuff that's in those walls. 
Come on. When's the last time you anointed and purged your jewelry? Ooh, we never heard of that. That's new age. No, it is a new age. Joshua said the stone is heard. Everything that was said wrong in that house, if it's not been forgiven and covered, it's still alive in that house. You want to live there? You want to go to that environment? That's a dark, noisy place. See, the Passover, the Jewish people today are looking forward to their Messiah. Maybe they haven't identified that it's Jesus, but they're looking forward. They really believe there's a Messiah coming. And that Messiah, the lamb that they slain in all their sacrifices, was a symbol of his coming, they believe this, his coming redemption. And when they slayed the lamb at the Passover, they didn't put the blood on the kid. They put the blood on the place. They knew that the place could be protected from evil. And when they put it on the doorpost, evil couldn't enter that place. Have you done that to your car? Come on. Have you done that to your house, your office? Try it on a stranger's door when you walk up to the door. And you touch that handle. I bless this house in Jesus' name. I bless this office. For the blood of Jesus, all evil spoken against people in this place. What kind of tracks do you leave? You can leave tracks. A track of purity. A track of protection. A place change because you've been in the place. Stuff you give away. You bless it before you give it away. Don't you ever give a gift without putting a fix on that gift, a fix of radiance, a fix of love, a fix of peace, a fix that God's going to speak through his science of sound. And we live in a noisy environment. Your computer remembers every place it's ever been. Well, you don't know that. Some don't. Oh, you just think that the cookies is the only place that's got a memory. No, there's a registry in there. Then it's all there. And you erase it. You thought you threw it away. No, it didn't go anywhere. All you did is erase the address. So if that silly computer can remember everything that has ever been, every image that's ever been on it, the matter that the computer is made out of has recorded every thought that has been. And if you don't get the blood applied to all of that evil, you will never know God's plan. Because you have stopped it with your words and with your actions and with the curses and the evil that Satan has thrown to kill, steal, and destroy. And it's as simple as in the name of the blood of Jesus Christ, this is purified. And I'm forgiven in the name of Jesus and his blood has made me pure. Carry that through your life. That's the only noise killer there is on your circuit. The blood of Jesus Christ. Now, there's psychological noise. There's stuff that I have to learn to like sometimes. I don't want to give it up. and It may not be evil. It's just me. I'm a little different, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> and you are too. Okay, I have noticed. <laughs> Here's one over here that's really intense, okay? <laughs> There's one over here who just wants to know it all right now, right there. She just wants to know it all. The Lord just, no barriers there. Just, Lord, give me the big load right now. <laughs> and he will. And he is. And you've got a special commission to do with that knowledge, something that only you can do. I don't know what that is. But she'll have circumstances that no one else can get to but her. And we're all like that. We're all there. I'm way off my outline. <laughs> We're going to take some questions. I talked about with our former band with knowing our full destiny. Uh, does that have anything to do with like deja vu? Let me tell you what deja vu often is. Deja vu is the moment of consciousness in the neuron firing of the brain where that you're remembering what just happened because you've had a double consciousness 
of the same event. Uh, that sometimes is what deja vu is. There have been tests and studies done where they have put the helmets on people, psychologically. Duke University has done a lot of this kind of work. And they'll have a moment of deja vu, and there's no new neuron firing in the brain. It's a repeat, like a hiccup, of the experience you just had, and you think you've remembered it. But there's, it's the same event. Now, deja vu, in the true sense could be God's revealing something to you. Now, there's no hiccups with God revealing. When God wants to speak to you, he can make it, and you can receive it. Now, noise keeps it from happening. If you're not attentive, if you're not seeking God, if you're not looking for God's plan, he could be talking to you, and you never hear it. He's, He's broadcasting, but you're not receiving. And then a little glimpse will come through, And you got something, but you didn't get it all. Forgive me for a moment when I'm not attacking anybody here. But I have friends, and I have done it in my life, and I've kept them. I still have them. Papers where somebody had a word of knowledge for me or a tape for me. And I'm not saying throw the papers away. Throw the tapes away. But you don't need to have something to go back to to hear God's plan. God's not that fickle. He wants you to know his plan so broad that if he spoke something into your life at some point in an important meeting, if you get quiet, get the noise turned off, God's going to make that so clear to you, you won't miss it. He's not playing games with you. There are Bible codes. And I believe that the matrix of all the Hebrew writing is many dimensions deep. Somebody yeah. said there's even holographic images in locked in wow, those frequencies yes, of those vowels. We haven't learned how to play back the frequencies electronically of the Hebrew language. When we do, it could be video. It could be algorithm. I got to jump off on another one of my favorite tangents. I'll actually hold that question. We all picture the priest and the ephod. And they got the stones. And the priest goes in to the Holy of Holies. And the candelabra modulating God's presence into the stones, the stones would pick up a message that when he walked out, like a crystal computer screen, information came from God through the ephod. Are you all aware of that? I had a very strange spiritual experience at the Western Wall where I was praying one day. Becky was up praying with the women. I didn't plan to share this, but it's for somebody, okay? The Lord tells me to go to the Temple Institute. Now, I had heard about the Temple Institute. It's a place in Jerusalem where they're literally building the implements, the ephod, the instruments for the third temple. They're going to build another temple. Now, they're committed to build a temple. And we can all deny it. We can all say a fooey, but... They're committed to build a temple, and they're going to build a temple. I'm praying at the wall. The Lord speaks to me very clearly. Go to the Temple Institute. There's a man that you're supposed to talk to about, and a data dump hits me that I got weak, very weak. I didn't know where the Temple Institute was. How foolish for you to say, I don't know. Okay? So I rushed to Becky. Big sign, women only. <laughs> She's way over there by the wall. So I looked as feminine as I could. <laughs> Which I want you to know I don't do very good. <laughs> so I go find that girl, I tap her on the shoulder, and there's guards, female guards, with their woozies hanging on their backside. And they're going to throw my little self out of there. They don't want this, this American in there. Rebellious American, I suppose they thought. I get back in. I say, take me to the temple. And so she gives me the sentence. I don't know where it is. I've been there. It's up that street. Those steps. That quick. 